when we're in the subconscious, the environment is from the memories and the adaption of the memories that are ours in our our mind access area. When you're in the superconscious state, then you're subject to the influences of um, all the all. Um, the whole of being, of all being, God included, you see. You're subject to the full mind of God. And when you're in the conscious state, you're reacting to the physical um, dimension around you. So, for instance, a person who's asleep is quite difficult to wake up because you're trying to invade the subconscious with the consciousness of the, you know, the room we're in, the bed we're in, the person you're in. You're trying to wake up and say, hey, hey, wake up, you're dreaming, dreaming, wake up. It's a nightmare. You're invading that with the conscious mind. And, uh, well, of course, usually, <laughs> I mean, you succeed. And they wake up, oh, 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 yes, it was a dream. Oh, thank you, love. When we're in the world, our normal awake state, what we call normal, <laughs> you know, when sun's up, most of it, anyway, hopefully, um, and we're wandering around, our mind is subject to the conscious world, the material plane. We're not in tune with the um, superconscious in general. There might be the odd uh, our hat, the saint that is, but most of us, most of the time are not. And we're not in the subconscious state, although we can find that we drop into that when there's a certain monotony in the world. And this is what happens, of course, in poor meditation, that far from going into a superconscious state, you drop into a conscious semi, sorry, a subconscious semi-dreaming state. And uh, really, that's not doing you much good at all. <laughs> um, you know, the mind's wandering, and if you not care, we fall asleep. And we've experienced that, haven't we? Well, I suppose we have, anyway. The conscious life, then, is what we have been calling life. And what, in the words of Jesus, is not, if you would enter into life, you need to keep the commandments. In other words, you need to steal yourself and strengthen yourself and follow the rules that um, resist much of the conscious. Um, inclinations that come in the material world. So you stay faithful, faithful to your path, spirituality, faithful to your wife. Um, you're going to work even though you'd rather not because you feel tired or you'd rather um, go fishing or whatever it is you do, you know. I mean, you'd rather stay at home and uh, do the garden and be with the wife or something. Do you see um, the conscious life, to survive in it, you need to keep various rules and consistencies despite the pull of the environment around you. You know, you feel tired, you don't want to get up, but you need to get up the 
point of view of the conscious life continuing. You know, you need to earn a living and uh, eat and uh, all the other things. So, um, so the conscious life is actually not a, not living at all. It's um, it's what we've defined to be living, which is acting by a reaction to all the um, forces upon us that exist in the phenomenal um, materialistic time-space matter dimension of the world. And that's what we've been calling life. But it's much more like a stone rolling downhill, which bounces from boulder to boulder as it hits another stone and boils into the air and bounces again. And, you know, who knows where it's going to land at the bottom. Uh, but at the bottom it's going to land, sort of thing, you know. Which is called um, death where it stops bouncing down the hill because it's got to the bottom of the hill, so to speak. So that's not true life. True life is where you actually um, take some command of what's going on. You experience the control. A mind in position upon the life, so to speak, that you seem to be experiencing. And heaven, the superconscious state, you're going to be doing that completely. You are proof against all external um, uh, negative influence, if you like. You're open only to the harmony of the host of heaven. And it's a life that is transcendent compared to conscious life. And we touch on that when we're in love, and we touch on it when we're in worship and devotion. And possibly at other times too. I think we touch on that with regularities that we didn't particularly pursue. When we've been with someone, or some place, or with some object like the car, for a long time. It starts to become part of us. Um, even if it's a difficulty, it's, you know, no longer bringing uh, whatever we benefit we thought it was bringing. It's somehow part of us. We don't want to throw it off. We don't want to dump it. Um, it's very sad when the relationship of such comes to an end. You know, we sell the car, or um, we move house, or, or the wife goes, you know. Um, bad. Because the bonding, the reality, has been felt simply through the passage of time in the conscious. We have a longing for the permanence of relationship which is so fundamental to um, qualify to be in heaven. So the misunderstanding of uh, non-attachment um, is a great shame, for we are to be attached unquestionably to the eternal, to the good and unattached to that which is um, harm, loss, death, ruin, very unattached, very seeking waves of avoiding such. Yeah. So, for instance, I mean, it is a uh, very bad to be pursuing things that are going to be harmful. Very good to be pursuing things that are good, truly good, and eternal, and of God. And we should most certainly be attached to such purpose. It's crucial. It is the very key to the door of heaven.
So we guard our faith. We guard our perception of our, what is right, what we should do. We're faithful and true in as far as we can be. And we increasingly determine to be so determined. Well, in simple ways, this means that our daily living becomes not a reaction to the stimuluses around us, but a thoughtful um, awareness and consciousness of such influences and uh, what is best to do. So a great calmness helps here despite um, whatever the storms are that may be raging, and an inner peace in which um, we contemplate what is the godly uh, godly reaction to such circumstances. We start to get a resistance to simply falling to the temptations of knee-jerk, fast reactions uh, to the changes in the environment around us. We learn patience, we learn grace, forgiveness and so on. We learn to um, forego immediate pleasure in order to gain long-run joy and blessedness. We increasingly move towards a superconscious state from conscious daily living, which is not a consciousness really at all, it's simply a reaction to the senses that we're given here in the material world, which you do not have in the um, subconscious state. The material world can't invade it. You don't feel heat and cold, you don't feel pain. But you do feel all the um, emotions and you have all the thoughts that you have gleaned from living and you're blending them into uh, a subconsciousness, a labyrinth of Chaos, really. And you're trapped in um, that subconscious state while you're in it. So, of course, it doesn't take a too exceptional person to say, well, can I start to become aware when I'm dreaming? And you may well have had the experience of steering the dream because you're aware it's a dream. Or you're aware there's something strange going on and you start to exercise some supernatural powers. And, you know, you're floating, you're flying, you're swimming when you could never swim in the conscious life, but you do in the dream. Things like that. You start to exercise the sovereignty in the conscious, in the subconscious. And uh, that may well cause you to wake up, of course. And uh, that may be your intention. Do you see you've brought a certain mindfulness that is over and above the subconscious dreaming state? You brought some of the conscious world into it and you may well wake up, of course by doing so. And we need to wake from the conscious state into the superconscious state. And now and again we get glimpses of doing that, as in worship and um, falling in love and so forth. Not sure as there's many other circumstances which happens. Might have to think about that. <laughs> yes. What do you think? Thank you, Heavenly Father.